So today we're glad to be chatting with Antonio Cupo. How's it going? Great. How are you? Very good. So tell us, recently you've been working on Bomb Girls. How's it been on set lately? It's been going great. We're almost finished season two. We're about uh, two and a half weeks away. Uh, it'll be all wrapped up by mid-December. Um, yeah, the season's like action-packed. It's full of a lot of great, great twists and turns to, to the original story. If anyone followed season one, uh, they're definitely not going to expect season two. Mm -hmm, exciting. Is there any episode, I know you can't say, but like in particular we should really look out for? Uh, I think all the episodes are amazing. Um, the writers have done a really good job uh, of making, building really interesting character arcs. Uh, there's a few episodes that have some special characters, like uh, Rosie O'Donnell is playing in the ninth episode. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, George Strombolopoulos as well on that, on that episode, and he's a sort of well-known character up here in Canada. Um, I think that uh, I think that they should just watch in the beginning to not miss any of the of the hot moments. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Special guests on there. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Well, how about on set? What is it like working on set? Like, what's your schedule like? The filming process, what's that like? Um, the filming process is, uh, well, I mean, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we, we shoot every five days a week. Okay. Uh, an episode lasts about six, seven days. Mm -hmm. uh, so every seven days we have a new episode. Um, it's pretty rigorous shooting schedule. We are generally shooting 12 hours, 12 to 13 hours a day oh, wow. uh, on, the, on this set. Yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into it. We generally shoot um, in, uh, on a, in a studio, but um, once in a while we're on location as well. Um, it's, it's a really interesting process for those who don't know it. I mean, for those who do, it's kind of, it gets normal after a while. Explaining it is, is difficult and I often explain it to my friends, mm -hmm. uh, try to explain it anyway, what exactly we do. And, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's kind of, a, it's, it's a bit of a dream job at the same time. It's not easy to, to, to comprehend. Right. Yeah. Cause I, I was going to say, I see your Instagram picture. So it seems like a lot of the time you do post you're on set a lot of the time. That's what I was going to say. A lot of hours spent on set. So, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of hours spent on set, and um, a lot of the time, I find. I mean, we have s lots of free time. You know, we've got lots of free time, and we have lots of work time. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's a famous thing in, in film that says it goes hurry up and wait, and that's exactly what it is. You know, you're you're rushing to to get in and get your makeup and hair and everything done and you're rushing in to do the scene and you do the scene, you finish it and then you've got three hours off or something like that, you know, but sometimes you shoot back to back as well. So it's not, it's not, uh, there aren't any guarantees in that. Very cool. I'm sure everyone's going to be excited to see the new season. I can guarantee that probably. hope so. <laughs> so tell us also about your new Hallmark movie, Love at the Thanksgiving Day Parade. How did you like filming that? Love of Thanksgiving Day Parade was uh, a really great experience. Uh, I worked with Autumn Reeser on that, and most people um, will recognize her from uh, her work on various American projects. Uh, I believe she did the OC, and she was on Hawaii Five O, and she was on um, uh, a lot of other shows. It was amazing to work with her, uh, sh and, and it was a really great to work with uh, our director as well. Um, Ron was absolutely amazing. It was, it was just a really good experience. We were shooting in Vancouver, so my hometown, and uh, it was neat to, to be back in locations that I was shooting in 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. and, That's awesome. Do you have a favorite scene from the movie you like filming? Yeah, there was a scene where, where it goes into split screen, and it reminded me of like 19... 1940s style um, kind of you know decisions in in, uh, in um, editing I guess it would be but uh, split screen with with uh, with Autumn's character and with my character and they're sort of like thinking about each other and they kind of just at a certain point just flop their hands out at the same time and I thought it was I thought it was a cute moment I even I stopped for a second I was just like. That was a cute moment. It is. Oh, my goodness. And that movie, like, is our ultimate favorite. We've already seen it, like, ten, ten times when it's played, and it's so good. Oh, really? Yeah, that's great. That makes me happy. Uh, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of really, really good reviews about that, uh, about that film. And I never would have, I mean, I would have guessed when, it, when, it, when we were shooting it that it would have had some appeal to uh, the American audience, but um, 
uh, it, it became really popular. I think it was the second highest rated show of the, of the year or something like that for Hallmark, well, which it, is it deserves is, it, yeah. Yeah, and I know everyone else is excited too from from um, you know the creative team. That's so. right. Well, you know what it is? The lines and the jokes throughout the whole movie were all on par. It's not like even one moment was off. It was just all perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's mostly, I would think, mostly due to the writing. Or the, the writer in that was absolutely brilliant and just gave us so much to work with, you know, with the lines. And it's one of those classic comedy, uh, romantic comedies that, you know, when you read it, you, you go, okay. I can see this being, you know, uh, I can sort of see it happening on, on, on the screen already, you know, it's like, it's nothing like the, the wheel wasn't redone. It was just kind of made a little better, you know, it's like a, a true classic romantic comedy. You can just sort of kick back and, and watch, you know, over the holiday season and you don't have to, you know, hold on to the, the story. You just get it. You just, everything is just there, you know, you don't have to figure out too much stuff. Yes. Loved it. And we love how they put you two together, like, throughout the whole movie. You know what I mean? It wasn't like at the end, just like, oh, last five minutes. There you go. Just the whole movie, you guys were together. So that's good. Yeah. Right from the get-go, you see uh, you see the two characters together. And it, that's nice to build. Um, it builds sort of uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, relationship with the audience and the actor and, um, and relation or with the character, rather. And relationship uh, between the two characters right off the get go. So I, I found that really interesting as well. Oh, absolutely! We love the ice cream and cat food scene at the market. Oh, that was great. <laughs> yeah, it was good as well. <laughs> really good. <laughs> Do you have any Thanksgiving plans? Holiday plans? Is it is it tomorrow for you guys? Yes, Let's see. it is. It is. I think I think it's the 29th for us. Mm -hmm. I think it's the end of the month. Um, I wish I was back in LA with my friends right now and uh, we were making one of those big fat turkeys that we used to do back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, so happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, we have a lot to be thankful for, I think. And um, I hope your, your turkey dinner or whatever you choose to eat at Thanksgiving is, is as delicious as ours will be in a week. Yes, absolutely. How about anything on your uh, Christmas wish list this year that you really want? My Christmas wish list is just basically, you know, I'm, I'm, I kind of get my wish every year, and, and that's kind of to go back home and hang out with my family and and just do what I just do what I used to do, you know, back in the day. We really don't do gifts, so it's not like a, a wish list that's like uh, rich in material goods. It's we just sort of like, you know, I like helping my mom cook and hanging out around the house, and you know, the family's our family's pretty close, so. I look forward to going back to Vancouver, maybe, and, and hanging out with my friends and hanging out with my parents. And that uh, kind of that's the best part, though, like, definitely with the family. Like you said, I mean, no gift can ever add up to that, you know? Exactly. It can't. It's, it's priceless, as they say, priceless. <laughs> it is. Absolutely. So also go ahead and tell us about your Twitter now, which is your name, at Antonio Cupo. Yes, how at you, Antonio Cupo. How do you like using Twitter? Good, good. I, I um... I really wasn't at the beginning. I wasn't really sold on it. I was thinking like I don't want to, I don't want another f form of social media, and that's you know Facebook had already come out and and everyone was using that. And then there were so many limitations with Facebook and uh, with with regard to accessing the world, you know. And and I, I saw that certain people, you know, like the President of the United States and. Um, various, you know, world powers were, were using this, this form of, of media to, to basically reach out, you know, and, and, and to, to be in contact. Well, you know, as actors, we kind of need to be in contact with our fans too and people that, that watch our shows and like our shows and want to tell us things. You know, like, oh, I really like you with your hair longer, you know. <laughs> Not that we can really change that. You know, oftentimes it's, it's kind of things that... Um, that we can't do. But I like knowing that that people are interested in in, in projects and, and they want to see maybe another romantic comedy because it kind of diff it changes decisions that I make too because you know we're sitting around reading scripts all the time. Yeah, I might like doing I might like doing action, but maybe the people want to see something else. So I might um, take something another project and and you know we're all kind of working together here. That's I like. Reading things about my about my life, uh, some people find it interesting. Probably the people that don't find it is interesting, they've already unfollowed me, so <laughs> they don't need to be uh, mentioned. Maybe, 
but I, I kind of I, I like having my fans, and I, and I and I like staying up to date. I, I can't reply to everyone, unfortunately, even though I do. Um, but I, I try to do my best to you know fill people in on what's going on and, and when shows are coming out and that kind of that kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, there's like positives and negatives to that media platform. The positives is, like you said, it connects people worldwide. Where years ago could we have talked like that worldwide? You know what I mean? Like with fans like that. The whole yeah, world. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, and it's going to be interesting where it goes in the next 10 years for sure. Absolutely. And I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's next. I don't know what's next. Who knows? No, I, I, don't, I really, I mean, like, if you consider where we were 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, with regard to um, you know social media, social media didn't exist. You couldn't use social media even ten years ago in a sentence without people going. So what? What is yeah. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now social media is a household term. Um, I mean, it's it's probably taking a lot of business away from other forms of media like advertising and whatever else. But you know, there's there people people develop and, and they, they develop their ideas in different ways and you see companies shifting and you see, you know, television companies go to, going to internet-based uh, television companies, you know, and broadcast in a different form um, and, you know, we're just all evolving constantly and, and, and changing and if we can keep on uh, allowing our minds to grow in that direction, then maybe we, maybe one day we'll be developing some of this, this uh, incredibly interesting, uh, these incredibly interesting forms of, of media. Yes, agreed. Oh my goodness, also I think MySpace, they're bringing that back as well. I heard about that. So uh, I think they've been trying to bring that back for some years now. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I have a MySpace page from years ago. I think it's difficult to compete with uh, with the powers that be right now, especially that uh, certain, they're going to have to come up with something very new and innovative, I think, for um, for people to, to go back. You know, to go back to MySpace. A lot of people just forgot about MySpace, yeah, and I'm one of those people. Um, so, I mean, if they come up with something new and innovative, then great. You know, it's kind of like what iPhone did with with BlackBerry; it just knocked them out of the market. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe BlackBerry uh, will come back with something absolutely amazing. But until that happens, you know, everyone's on their iPhones. Right. Oh, I know. I don't think there is any other phone option like that people have. You know, what I mean, like you said, you look around; it's just iPhones. That's it. I mean, yeah, they say that that you know the 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 Android phones are still the most sold in the world, and mm -hmm. that may be possible. Something like you know what PC users are and what Mac users are, but uh, I don't know. It's like the the uh, the the interface, the the usability, the understandability of, of an iPhone. I I just feel it. You know, it kind of knows what I want to do even before I push the buttons, mm -hmm. and. That kind of intuition uh, in a smartphone. I mean, they're really getting smart, maybe smarter than we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, you know, we, we definitely are not getting any smarter with them. That's for that's for sure. Um, but yeah, it's just it's it just uh, our, our whole lives are are being run by these things. You see people walking around the street and just like looking at their phones, and either they're on, you know they're they're playing some kind of weird game or. You know, they're buying new animals in Farmville, or they're they're following some Google uh, map or whatever the the new map system is with the new iOS, and it's just like keeping up with the stuff is is crazy, but it's part of our lives. So. I know it's insane. You don't even need a computer anymore. I mean, it has like everything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm one of those people that have like every like I've got the the iPhone, and then I got the iPad, and then I got the Mac, and then I got the iMac, and then I've got the, you know various. Macintosh products, and I find myself with all of these products, and I just think, okay, I am definitely what I did not want to become, which is a product of you know advertising and, and everything else. It's the like one thing I wanted to stay away from, and the one thing I swore I'd stay away from, and the one thing I bought into wholly. And it's surrounding so, you, yes. One <laughs> is doing a great job at marketing and, and, and advertising these products. Oh, absolutely, I know. So you're not a PC guy, then? It's definitely all Mac for you. I mean, uh, I I can use PC. I don't prefer it. Mm -hmm. If I consider that my Macintosh cost cost me one, two, three, four, five times the price of, of a very similar unit mm -hmm. uh, uh, on, on a PC, I don't know. I, I kind of I kind of dread that fact. Though at the end of the day, I still went and bought the the Mac. You know, mm -hmm. so I mean. 
I don't know. Well, my my PC friends uh, are are looking at me like I'm crazy, and I'm sure most of the war world that run you know is run on PC or the, that are working with PC are looking at us Mac users that like we're absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. But hey, you know that's just the way it is, right? Oh, I know. No, no I'm a. I agree with you because I'm a Mac person as well. I have my iPhone and then I have my Mac computer. So it's like I, I don't want to go back to PC though. Now I learned and I'm like I'm not going back. Exactly. Yeah. Pick a format. Pick a pick a. a uh, pick your hardware and, and stick with it. Exactly. Well, I had to ask you because you, you mentioned your iPad, and I saw on Instagram you had a little puppy holding your iPad. That's right. Can you tell me about your little doggy? It's not my doggy. Oh, it's not, not your dog. My, oh, it's not my dog, no. You, um, you rented a puppy? <laughs> I, I rent, often rent puppies. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I use them for my benefit, obviously. <laughs> and no, I did not rent a puppy. No, I was uh, staying at my friend's place, and. Um, and uh, that little puppy's name is Benito, oh. and we became very close. And sometimes, you know, you, you'll find with with dogs that you you give them any amount of love, and they just want to hang out with you all day long. They're just suckers for love. Mm-hmm. And Benito's one of those one of those suckers for love, just uh, uh, hanging out with me all day long. And I was able to so sort of like. Once I just sort of sat my iPad down on it, and he just like liked it. I guess it was warm. Oh, you know, okay. just like I was like, oh, this is an interesting iPad. So every time I hold my iPad, he just kind of look at me and like, hey, you know, I'm here. You want to, you know, use me to hold your iPad? <laughs> so he kind of became my iPad holder for the oh, period. That was like a million dollar picture. Like that should have made like the top hit on Instagram. It was so adorable. Oh, that's we'll have to re I'll have to re Instagram it and yeah. maybe make it a little better. You should, yeah. Oh, so you don't have any pets of your own then? No, I had a dog um, that passed away some years ago, and uh, I'm, I'm like definitely an animal person. I love animals, um, and I love dogs. I, I love all animals. I mean, I think that if you if you understand what they are, you kind of just love them all. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a dog for a while. It was amazing, kind of impossible with my lifestyle, but at the same time, you make time you make it possible because they do give you more love than absolutely any human would and could ever um yeah and the, the love is definitely unconditional and that is something that you can get used to pretty quick exactly so and then is there any other projects you're working on at the moment or anything else you can inform your fans on oh uh, there's a couple of things in the works um there's a new project that i'm looking at uh in these days that might be shooting in the next couple of months, which is is neat. I can't really talk too much about it, but I've got other projects coming out. I've got September 11, 1683, which is uh, talks about the Crusades, um, the Battle of Vienna uh, in 1683. Um, that, uh, that we shot in Romania last year, and I believe it, the premiere already happened in Poland. Um, so neat international type project. A few other things came out this year, but they're already out. Some things I'm seeing the reruns on, Supernatural, and and in these projects here, people keep their eyes out for them if they like. But I mean, really, uh, what uh, what they should be keeping their eyes open for is you know reruns of Love the Thanksgiving Day Parade uh, and Bomb Girl season two, which will likely air in Canada in January and likely in February in uh, in America. Okay, awesome. I was gonna say also for Supernatural. Do you have a lot of fans that um, talk to you about that? Like that are fans of that? Yeah, it's amazing. The the, the sci-fi fans that um, the sci-fi fans are just are absolutely are absolutely crazy in a great way. They'll uh, they'll follow you and uh, they they want to know who you are, and what you're up to, and everything else. So I think I, I you know I gained some popularity by doing. By doing that, and uh, I liked I liked working on that show, and I liked working with the, with the guys, and um, it's it's just kind of like you know you you look at every project as something you want to do artistically, and then at, at the end of it, you know there's some residual payback because people follow follow and they watch you and they learn about you, and, and you learn about them too. Um, I just want to backtrack a second because I just remember, of course, a uh, very interesting project I did, American Mary, uh, which is um, a movie shot by the Saska sisters. Uh, we shot that in Vancouver as well last year. It's, it's about body modification and a young, a young medical student who, who basically uh, seeks out uh, alternative um, 
businesses uh, in order to gain uh, some find have some financial gain and and put herself through school and that finds herself in a very very tough uh, difficult situation um, American Mary yeah it's uh, it's doing its tour of the world right now uh, at all the film festivals and and, and I know uh, uh, we did the, the LA um, After Dark uh, Festival. We did the, the Toronto, uh, or I think it was LA Screen Fest, and then it was like Toronto After Dark, and then there was the New York Festival. And we've been we've been going around with this project, and it's been it's been absolutely amazing. Um, Catherine Isabel stars in that. It should be uh, it should be a good one. So now that's uh, that that's one that one's for the horror fans. They'll they'll definitely like that one, even though um, for how much horror it is it's still kind of like really intense yes and bloody yes but kind of sexy and you know just a, a really good film mm-hmm. not necessarily just a blood and gut horror film mm-hmm. so I think people will, will, uh, will like that even if they're not a huge fan of the genre do you not mind working on horror films like that um I mean it's like whether or not you're you're dealing with blood and guts or whether or not with love scenes or uh, whether or not you're you're just always it's just always art and it's it's a story and you're telling a story you're helping a director achieve you know his um, his vision creatively and you're helping your you know the writers basically uh, you know putting a face to what they've written um, so you're kind of always working for the same thing the circumstances change at the end of the day I mean like it doesn't. Uh, I see the process. I see it behind this, and, and like you work through it slowly. It's not like you're just locking on a set and you know something pops out at you or something. Right. You know, uh-huh. <laughs> you're just you know, scared or or, uh, or or shocked. You sometimes get shocked because you get sprayed with blood, perhaps, and it's mm-hmm. you, you never you never get sprayed with blood or something wild and crazy will happen. And, and definitely in the Saska sisters film uh, American Mary, uh, a lot of crazy stuff happened, and a lot of it is in the film. Uh, but um, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't freak me out to 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 work on any kind of new projects or horror projects or whatever the case is. It's like sci fi, you know, you get sucked up into a tunnel and you know the, the the language changes and you're in a spaceship and whatever the case is. But you know, it just it's just your environment that that and your in your language that changes. Um, so I mean. We the artwork still kind of remains the same. If you can get all the words in your mouth, you know, it kind of remains the same anyway. Right. From our perspective at home, it might look scary and stuff like that. But like you said, when you're filming, you know everything. You're aware of what's going to go on. You're an actor. You have to know your lines. What's going on firsthand? So. Exactly. A lot of that. A lot of the the, the shock value happens in the editing room, and um, you know, a lot of a lot of it happens while you're creating it on set. But I mean, uh, horror doesn't really shock me. Uh, I don't. I don't really know what does. Maybe like something would shock me that's a little bit more heartfelt because we're seeing less of that. Um, which is why I like working on films, you know, like romantic comedies where uh, you know you're 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 in the moment with this other person and you're and you're feeling uh, this really great vibe and this connection. And the people at home are reading that as well. You know, they're 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 seeing exactly you may be feeling in that moment exactly so. and I think that's why a lot of the fans fall in love with the characters because you just it just seems so real you know what I mean like you go off screen and then you see the person in real life and you're like are you that character like you know what I mean they start believing the character more so than the real person this is true this is true yeah I, and a lot of the, of the emails the fan mails are that it's just like so do you actually did you actually fall in love with this person or <laughs> are you guys just acting and, and I consider that a compliment mm-hmm. uh, because that means that people you know they were watching it for what it is. You know, they were they were really invested in the characters and story, and that makes me happy. Exactly, but if we at home don't feel that chemistry between you two, then like you said, then it's not working properly. Then something's not right. Somewhere. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, they, they definitely want to be. They definitely want to be uh, lost. Um, we call it willing suspension of disbelief, right? Mm-hmm. So if. Uh, if you believe it, then we've done our job 